next most important thing, finding the right photo to fit here. So for example, using Harry, I want to find the right photo to fit this angle. Um, a lot of people tend to go for photo shoots because automatically in your head you're like, okay, that's the best quality photo I'm going to get, which is true. Photo shoots tend to be the best quality. Um, that's why they're shot you know, professionally. But as I always say, candid photos are where it's at. That's where our, most of my images come from of the boys. That's where I get the best angles. And thankfully, where a lot of those are taken by the paparazzi, they're good quality. They're taken with, you know, awesome cameras. Now, it doesn't have to be candidates of them walking down the street. Those are the ones I use a lot for tattoos because that's all the different angles in regular candid photos are awesome. You can find some really good stuff that way. But um, red carpet stuff, gold. Um, so we're going to want a picture of Harry kind of looking to the side and the first thing I always think about here is, is you look at the eyes and I'm going to want to find something where this side of his face here um, is going to be obviously not all the way around. There's not a whole lot of this side of his face showing. So I want something where he's not completely looking to the side where I can see his whole profile and I obviously don't want something where he's kind of facing towards the center because this side of Thor's chest is facing away from me at a harsh angle. So we're going to want to look for something similar to this with Harry and that's the key in making something that looks super realistic is getting something that is almost the same body angle because if you try to force something into this picture that's not close you're going to see every single detail of what's off so let's go back to our browser here and um I'll show you the main website I use and that's OneDirectionPhotos.net. This has got pretty much every photo that's ever been taken of the boys since like 2010. So it's perfect. Um, it doesn't always have everything, but I find that it's not as biased as some of the other websites. So that's OneDirectionPhotos.net. It's got all of these categories, and what I'm going to want to look for right now is I'm going to go to appearances and events. Um, this is going to be the, the events that they go to, award shows, um, some performances, things like that. 2015 is normally what I go for because obviously, you know, Harry hasn't done a lot in 2016. If you're looking for something from the other boys, you can you can go into 2016 and probably find some really good stuff. But I'm going to go into 2015 for Harry. Now it's got some things up here in the last updated albums. And sometimes you can look up here and say, oh, that's the event I want and go ahead and click on it. Otherwise, you can come down here and look at the more detailed categories. I think I'm going to go straight into Press Room Harry for what, American Music Awards. I, I, I totally knew that before I even looked at the category. Because in that preview, I could already tell there were some side pictures. I like this one. We're going to click on this one. So we, <laughs> I love this face. So this one's got what we had in that photo where we can see not all of the side of his face but it's not completely turned around to profile and we can see that his body is kind of turned the way that we want it so I'm just going to copy this image and come back over into Photoshop do new okay and then I'm going to paste I do free transform for this you just go to edit transform and flip horizontal I think you can also do this um, via image and um, image rotation. You can do it that way as well. I'm just so used to using free transform. So the way I cut my stuff out, you've got several selection tools here you can use um, in good old Photoshop. We've got a rectangular marquee tool. That's obviously if you want to cut square poly uh, lasso tool or regular lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool. And we've got our magic wand. That's if you're selecting large blocks of color. Um, but today I like to use the um, 
poly lasso tool and that's the one that looks kind of like the little line figure here. Um, that's going to give me a straight line. It doesn't matter how messy this is, like just get in there because you're going to use your eraser tool after this. So it doesn't matter how precise this cut is. I usually just go in here and you know whatever. So I'm just going to cut out his face because that's all I want right now. And then I'm going to flip back to my Thor and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm not going to save this because I'm not actually going to use this in the end. But um, just for reference, you need to go ahead and go to File, Save As, and go ahead and save this PSD, okay, which is your Photoshop file. Look at all these files I have. Um, because if something were to happen and Photoshop would crash, which is what has happened to me several times, you don't want to lose all that hard work. So please save, save, save. Photoshop is good about recovering things if it crashes, but it doesn't always recover it. So just better be safe than sorry. So I'm going to go up to edit and paste, and that's going to give me Harry's save. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it like this. We're done. Now, anyway, so what I like to do to size this down, and a biggest mistake, listen to me, listen to me. The biggest mistake I see with a lot of new editors is they tend to come in here with the free transform tool and they scale this down without any control and so sometimes the face ends up being super long, too too wide, you know, they mess it up mess up the proportions. And as soon as you mess up the proportions of that face even a little bit, it's gonna look completely off. So please don't do that. I'll show you a trick. So go to edit, free transform and what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the shift key. So press down on that shift key, hold down, and then click on the side of your box here and hold down your mouse and start scaling it while holding down that shift key. That's going to make it so that your picture does not get distorted in any way. And so what I do to make this fit over the face is I'm going to come over here to your my layer panel. If you don't have your layers panel showing, all you have to do is go to window and it'll show you all of the uh, windows you have open. Make sure that layers has a check beside it um, because you're going to need that. I also always have my history panel up because I have to go back and fix my mistakes. So your history panel is going to allow you to take steps backwards. So. I'm going to go to my hairy face layer and I'm going to go ahead and label that so you can kind of, if you can see the screen, I don't even know if you can. I'm going to label that layer hairy. It's, it's good to label your um, layers because if you have a bunch of them, it's, you can't really see sometimes on that small window what you've got going on. So I'm going to go to my hairy layer and I'm going to bring down the opacity. And what opacity means is... Um, how much you can see through it. So I like to bring down the opacity so I can kind of see that layer underneath so that I can fit this to where I need it. As you can see already, and this is something um, that if I was working on this as an actual edit, I would maybe find a new picture because I'm a perfectionist and I would see that I got an image of Harry that doesn't exactly work eye-wise. Um, because he needs to be turned just a little bit more um, to the side. But that's okay. For the purpose of this, we're not going to worry about it. So I'm going to kind of get this as close as possible. I'll, like Another mistake I see is do not, do not, do not start trying to make this fit like this. Don't start scaling it and trying to make it fit to the details of Chris Hemsworth's face underneath there because... Chris Hemsworth's face is not Harry's face. So if you try to change the proportions to fit the actor's face, it's not going to look like Harry anymore. I see that mistake a lot as well. Um, so we're going to scale this. And what I would do here normally is just grab my eraser tool that's over here on your tools panel. And just a little thing to help you here. Go up into this little screen that's under your edit option <coughs> as I hack away. Um, and mess with the brush that you use. I find that 
using that harsh line for your eraser is going to look awful so I like to use that soft uh, brush and then I bring down the opacity a lot because I don't want to just erase at a hundred percent because I'll show you the difference if you just start hacking away at this at 100% opacity, although it's soft because of the brush I picked, which is good, sometimes that's not, you don't want to erase that much sometimes. Sometimes you want to keep a little bit of it and not make it look so dramatic. Um, and you can always erase and erase and erase and erase until you get 100% opacity um, if you want that. But I like to keep it at a lower opacity. So, you know, kind of move along as you go. You can move it and place it and, and see what you think looks good. Um, another good reason for using a low opacity is if I want to keep some of the details of Thor's skin underneath Harry's face, I can. I use that trick a lot. And I'll, I'll show you that in future tutorials. But, um... And I'm kind of hacking away, hacking away, hacking away. You can keep his ear if you want. It wasn't exactly in the right position, so I didn't. But if you do that, please go back in to that Thor layer, whatever layer you're using, and change that ear so it looks more like Harry's ear. Because that's another thing that's, that's bad. You don't want to leave that as it is because that's already something that somebody's going to look at and know is off and this is something that obviously I would normally spend more time on perfecting but because we don't really have time for that in this tutorial I'm not going to worry about it um I, I don't think I'm going to do much to this just because I don't have the time in this tutorial um that looks like crap <coughs> i should definitely start posting edits like this what would you guys think if i posted this i need to watermark this this is amazing um on our next tutorial i'll kind of go in depth with this and show you for example how do you change the color of his face to fit the base photo, how do you um, make this look like the same quality as the picture below it where it's all gritty and cold and, and um, contrasty and stuff like that. I'll definitely show you. <laughs> this is such not the right picture for this base photo. I hope that helped you though as far as where can you find base photos and, and what photo can you use over top of that. It really is as easy as that. Have an idea in mind of what you're going to do. Look for the picture that you like and um, look for a good quality photo. If you have any questions, for, any further questions about this subject, finding photos and finding the right picture of the person you want to incorporate to go on top of it, please feel free to ask me in the comments or you can send me a message on Tumblr and I will get back to you. Um, there's also a contact button on my Instagram that will send an email directly to me. So feel free to go on there and message me as well if you don't feel comfortable with um, submitting something to me on Tumblr. If you have any other suggestions of some tutorials you would like to see, feel free to message me or comment about that as well. And I'm going to try to get some more tutorials up as soon as I can to kind of get in there and show you some more details on how to do a good photo manipulation. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to call this one done. Thanks, guys.